York City's Flatiron District. Home to Lilac Gallery, which specializes in contemporary and fine art, is pleased to present an exhibition of works by Michael Colavito, titled Under No Illusion. Colavito reinvents and expands upon traditional filmmaking, photography, and cinematic techniques. His main contribution to the world of modern art is the introduction of a brand new art form. We're here with artist Michael Colavito, and we're, we're down here in the Flatiron District at Lilac Gallery, and this is Under No Illusion. Could you tell us what, what uh, tell us a little bit about this show and what is visual illusionism? The show's been going on since September 10th. It's, about, it's running a little long. We're going to extend it till the 7th. Visual illusionism is a new art style that's truly about something that hasn't been done before regarding photography and cinematography. It's optical purity, but it's not about obsolescence. It's not about film being obsolete. It's like the best that film ever had to offer in 8x10 is captured in my art. And from there, I actually modify or evolve each image through varying elements. So what's here is a little bit of a mix. It's mostly one arena of my art. Because I have like color and shape, I have body sex and art, I have painting with light. Here we have some stuff that's about optical illusions. When you look at an image several different ways, you can see like in a few of these pieces, first the face, then a fragmented you know, body part collection. And this show is really about introducing a brand new art form and showing a little bit of it and, you know, saving the rest for show after show to come. Well, you know, through the years, you have sort of stayed away from galleries. What brought you to uh, Lilac Gallery and, and, and why? Why have you decided to show your work now? The Lilac Gallery, I've known about the family for a number of years and they're very involved with art, everyone in the family. So even Cindy and her husband Mark, co-owners of the gallery, they're artists themselves and they're able to deal with the temperament and mentalities of artists. So it's easy for me to get along with them for, for the start. Doing the business part was easy. You know, you take your percentage, I take my percentage. It was time for me to do a show. I hadn't done one because I really wanted to develop a body of work and it's taken 25 years that will stand out sooner or later and reach the magnitude of the masses that is what every artist hopes for. Their commitment at this gallery to something new and something truly original is paramount and that's really why I'm here right now. Recently I have heard from a number of people that are very mindful of the social media networking and each and every one of them have started to talk about sponsorships and younger kids, anywhere from teenagers to 30 and 40 years old and you know all the way up to senior citizens. A wide gamut of people that really want a taste of something refreshing. And everyone that becomes really mindful about what I'm doing, the, the most exciting and interesting thing for this entire show for me is that 90% of the people I ask, did you read what goes in, hadn't read it? And when they found out and really discovered exactly what this art form is about, they just showed a completely different kind of enthusiasm. They already, so many people reacted like, oh my God, what they were witnessing was special. As an artist, the first in presentation matters. I mean, so it doesn't necessarily matter how you did it. But the truth of any art, the truth of any artist, is about who he is, where he comes from, what his roots are, what techniques and measures he uses. So for me, the foundational principles of organic purity and optical purity, it's really, really important and it's significant. And the idea of the corporate sponsorships or that whole mentality for social media, getting behind this, is one for the public, is one for, you know, like American Express to show giant billboards of art that hasn't been doctored. We have not seen anything in 20 or 25 years. My son's 32 years old in his life. If he watches a television commercial, if he sees a billboard, if he sees a magazine ad, he knows subconsciously it's been treated. It's some kind of illustrator program, Adobe Photoshop. We take this for granted. 
My art is the opposite of that. You see something magnificent, and when you understand this artist did this in a unique and pure way, it has m meaning. All of these people I speak of were really impressed with the word purity, which was funny to me because I've been singing that word for a long time. But it sounds hyperbolic unless you hear really what the truth is behind the art. So it's really been about that. This show has been really an introduction to the art world in a different way. I've been knocking on the doors of museums and art critics and everyone alike for many, many years, and my presence is there. But this is a different way to go about it. And I'm certainly not above other artists, and I'm not a snob. I just wanted to break the art in where it felt correct, and now the time is correct. And I do like the presentation, because they're all true museum mounts. They're dive-bond aluminum, and they're limited edition prints. Only five people in the world are going to own these images. So it's something like that's very true to the collector, true to the inspiration of art. And I'm trying to be as real as I can as an artist. And, and last time we did talk uh, be, before, uh, it, it was a little bit more film-based. Could you uh, spend a few moments just telling us ab about, uh, that was uh, art for charity. I, I've had a program, I've had a no numerous numbers or, or amount of philanthropic and altruistic sort of projects going for many years. Often, in this particular show, I've, st I've shied away a little from speaking on that for a specific reason. I'm really, really true. The, my reputation you know, speaks for itself. And in 1985, I was responsible and part of the first exchange of artistic culture between the United States and China, which I was really proud of. And I was at City Hall with Mayor Koch being photographed. It was a wonderful event. Ever since that event, for 30 years, I have done numerous projects about philanthropy regarding, like I had a, a world project where I photographed 50 different countries of different cultures and people and submerged them in this type of artwork, kind of making everybody, you know, see similarities in people and bringing and uniting people. And I've always meant it and I still mean it. And I have an organization called Fine Art for Doctors, where every sale that's made you know, from any kind of art, it's Calavito, you know, based, goes to charities, and usually the client actually gets to choose the charitable organization. Here at this show, this is the first we're mentioning any of this, because I in no way want to confuse who I am as an artist, what I believe in, and the strength I feel my art deserves regarding platform, with the idea that I need to in any way use or exploit the idea of, look at me, I'm a goody two-shoes, I also do philanthropy. That's automatic. You know, I love art, and I do art for people. So that's an obvious interwoven idea. But I think the last time we got together, we maybe spoke a little on fine art for doctors and some of those other agendas. Well, you know what, we're going to take a walk around. We had a, a, an opportunity to speak with Mike one-on-one -on -one, uh, last week. So we're going to take a look at some of the work and, and, uh, and, and go to that, that, that tape. This piece here is, you know, I don't really have favorite pieces because the pieces at the show, when I made them, each of them mattered equally. But this piece with the Guggenheim Museum, I really, really enjoy. It's one of my recent pieces. I love human form and, you know, that whole body and being comfortable with your body and, like, you know, the sex that's attached to body nudes, but in a healthy, positive way. Nothing that's pornographic, of course. This piece for me, I mean, the best way I can say it is on interview recently, someone said, where did you get your inspiration for this? And I segued and said, the best thing about this piece is someone's or several people's reactions to it during the opening and during interviews. And the reaction was, I will never ever look at the Guggenheim Museum the same way ever again. So as an artist, that hit me. As an artist, I want to change, you know, your thinking. I want you to react and be moved by something. So to say that, to say like you'll never look at the Guggenheim again, I, I scored as an artist. And, you know, it, it, it took me away from even thinking about an explanation of where the inspiration came from. I'm not really sure where I got the idea in the first place, but it turned out to be, you know, a definite Calavito, you know, work of art. This piece here, I can't remember what year it's from. Actually, I'm gonna look. It is from, yeah, I knew it was a little while. 1999, I created this. And what I like about this piece is, in my work, my work is diversified, and we have different categories. And this category 
it's about a painting, one of my oil paintings, in my model's body. So we title this type of work uh, Body, Sex, and Art. This is something that, again, early, I, I shouldn't say early, 15 years ago, I was kind of consumed with. I have since created many other categories, a visual illusionism category, a color and shape category, a painting with light category. But this piece was one of the foundations of this concept or principle I have. And I, I really enjoyed the title of the piece because I was asked to title pieces for the show that didn't have titles. I did not have titles for all of my work. And <clears throat> we call it Touch of Earth. And the reason I called it Touch of Earth, I like the title because I wanted to have a piece that was otherworldly, if you will. So I thought, well, Touch of Earth, this could be about something touching the planet Earth from the outside. This could be Touch of Earth from the Earth itself because there's an organic, natural purity happening through my you know, science of capturing this image and what we're seeing here. But this, again, was one of the foundations, and I consider it one of my signature pieces. It's why it's actually here at the show, because the other art in the show is mostly about visual illusionism with several pieces from my early periods. The piece behind me here is sort of a tribute to magic, because this arena, if you will, well, I'm calling it now visual illusionism, I called it compositional illusionism at first, and this whole like genre or category developed in terms of like defining it or labeling it. It developed after I met a magician, Carl Michael, who came to meet me and was very impressed with my artwork, and he was praising me. And I said, "Thank you, thank you so much." And he got a little short with me. He said, "Listen, by your reaction." I know you hear this a lot, you think I'm just, you know, saying these words, but I really, really mean it. And he wanted to impress me that I matter to him because as an artist, I'm doing magic on film. He's aware of my purity and that I don't use computers or special effects editing of any kind, no blue screen, no green screen. Everything is about capturing the image on the original piece of film. So when he saw all of this work and said that, it made me think, you know, there really is a magical aspect to this. And I did a film, a movie film, pretty short, but it was loaded with cinematic technique that in motion, you know, basically came to life from this still idea. And the film is called Film Magic Purity. Again, the word purity because of what I'm saying, there's no computers. But I've gone on to develop maybe 20 pieces. And what I like about them the most, not necessarily this piece, because you see the eyes and the lips, but in some of the others, a double take kind of optical illusion is happening. Where you're looking at some of the other pieces, you'll see an eye and a, you know, a pair of lips, but you'll then realize, oh my God, I can see the whole face within this composition. And it appears very differently as you view it differently. Again, making the viewer like engage themselves in the thinking process of, what is this art about? Where does it come from? What does it mean? How did he do it? And these are the questions I want to raise. I want to just create excitement and, you know, an awareness or you know, I want to do something that people react to. So I'm getting reactions and I'm, you know, very happy that this arena is part of my body of work. And I'm Krista Hart reporting from Lilac Gallery here in the Flatiron District on Michael Colavito. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show and we'll see you in the art world.